Well, the most recent study indicated that we need around a trillion. That's a thousand billion Uganda shillings. Yeah. But of course, and this, your budget this should now? be. This should be. Right now, we are getting about 45 billion. That's 0 0.45 percent. Yes. 0 0.045 percent. Less than one percent of what you need. No, 45 out. Yeah. 45 billion. Yeah, 45 billion. So you find that that is very little. It will take you 20 years. It will take us a very long time. But if we can get this money over a period of five years, then the picture would be very different. How about municipality bonds? Why don't you float municipality bonds, raise this money, do the roads, and then collect it over a period of time? 25 year bonds, for instance. Mr. Um, no, I don't think I, I, I really have. Well, have you need to raise money. You could sell municipality bonds. The rich men in Kampala could get the money out of their, under their beds, give it to you, do the roads. Then you pay them slowly. You are guaranteed by the government. Well, first of all, I think Parliament has to... to because one trillion is about 400 million dollars. That's not too much. It's not too much. Maybe it's one of the options we could look at. Maybe honor you can throw more light. Talk to us that. about that. No, I, I think that's a very good idea. Um, as it is done in other countries, um, if a municipality does not have the money, they do raise actually. Uh, they, they do raise money through uh, bonds. Uh, but that is something that needs to be discussed with the cases and of course with the parliament, uh, with the parliament approval. But I just want to make a comment about these potholes. Yes, potholes in the city or even just in and around the city slows down traffic tremendously. I drive from from uh, from Chihuahua to to town. It takes more than an hour. And it is all because of potholes. And that's a journey that should take 15 minutes. Yes. I'm only 7, 8 kilometers away from the city. That's city a 15 minute journey, really. Yeah, 15 minutes journey. But it takes me an hour. And Four times as much as you should take. Exactly. And let alone, let alone the damage to cars. The other day, I broke a suspension of my car. Because of the holes in the road. 2.5 million. That is what I had to, I had to pay to fix the, 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 the damage. Because I did not see the possible the, the vehicle. You hit it. I hit it. And, and you are lucky because like, one of your colleagues had to go to the hospital. She has to rest for a month exactly. because her car rolled. Exactly. The car is damaged. She's also hurt. Exactly. So, potholes, first of all, if you look at the, the, the loss of revenue and productivity alone, I spent one hour. Okay, for us, Parliament starts in the afternoon, apart from committees which start at 10 o'clock. Yes. But what about those who come? Who are supposed, supposed, to, be, who supposed to arrive here at 8 o'clock or 8:30, and they can't because of because of traffic. So productivity is being lost because of potholes in the city. And I think uh, I, I support you that you try to come up with a realistic budget for next year. We shall support you because we need to we need to take the city to another level. We cannot continue the way things are. You can't. Yeah, of course. You cannot expand the roads. Right. Potholes are there also slowing down traffic. Imagine five, ten years from now. Right. What is Kampala going to be like? I don't, don't address some of these issues. Some of the things you're citing are based the linear effects, you know, yes. the car overturning and you losing the suspension. Yes. But there's also the stress. Even if the roads were smooth and there's a lot of traffic, by the time you get to your office, you really can't concentrate. Yes, if you're yes, a knowledge worker. Yes, yes, you know, you're already up. By the time you come to your office, you're tired, man. You're already, you're already tired, a tired person. So, you know, these are some of the issues that we need to look at very seriously. If you look at the budget, they're talking of uh, it's a five, 500 million. Dollars. Yes. Okay. Four hundred million. Okay. Four hundred. Let's say four hundred. Five hundred million. Five hundred million. I think that is something which this country can, can, can raise. Can, can raise. Yes, we can. Mr. Gaba, let's talk about buses. Update us on the buses. When do we see those buses coming? Whatever color, yellow, orange, whatever. <laughs> um, be green. Well, uh, the buses when they are arriving, I don't know. I think the, the the company that is importing those buses should come in. You have about three companies doing it, bring fifteen hundred buses, I think. No. One starts with five hundred, another has five hundred, another. I think that's that's the original plan. No, I think it's one company bringing the the buses in bits, yes. in phases. All right. Um, but the the last. Uh, time I talked to those people they, s they were saying that uh, probably by end of December the buses should be here the buses are that they have finished manufacturing them so they're being shipped so we're also hoping that uh, they are here because I, I think we they will help is the traffic yes snarlaps. yes and of course this is a private sector investment yes so we don't expect you to suffer the fate of the bicycles no <laughs> they're certainly <laughs> going to come but, but i think uh, uh, very quickly to to add on to that uh, these are a lot of fear 
uh, especially from the, pub, the public transportation operators, that the buses are kicking out taxis. Not in one day, maybe over to five years' time. But well, I mean, this is a free colony. But one thing I have to, to, to tell you is that the buses are going to operate along taxis. So, but the, the, the system we want to, to adapt is pick and drop, not parking all the time, but rotate around the city and drop and pick customers. So you want to abolish the old taxi park and the new one? Pretty much. If, if that, if we can afford, because it's one of one of the major um, the problem that congesting the city. Because that's something that seems to be unique to Kampala. In other places, you don't really find such yeah. a thing. Yes. 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 I want to add what uh, Mr. Gava said. Um, I think it's one of the recommendations also of the parliament that we need to decongest the city. And one of the ways to decongest the cities is to have satellite parks around the city. Outside of the city. Oh, outside the city. Uh, taxis should not come into the city. Because there are many. If you, as you drive on these roads here, if you count the number of taxis on the road, they constitute about 90% of, of, of the passenger vehicles. So just imagine if you do not have the taxis, the streets will be very clear and people will be able to move uh, m much more freely and, and, and also take much time to move from point A to point B. So I think this is where the buses come in. If you go to most of these modern cities, I mean, all the cities, you, you, you have buses. buses. You just have buses right. circulating around. And everything works like yes. clockwork. So the, 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 the taxis will, will, will pick up from where the buses have, yeah. have stopped. Right. We're not saying that they're not going to be there. They'll be there, but let them be at the periphery so that they de we can decongest the city. Here. So the taxis are going to be phased out slowly. <laughs> at some point, they have to go. In Indonesia, how about the other roads, Chisasi and so on? The portal roads that are not in the CBD that we don't see a lot. Chisasi Road. Those are particular. Let's talk about Chisasi Road. Yeah. Yeah. No, a former mayor lives there. Go on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think there's a plan to upgrade some of those roads. Currently, we have the. Kampala Infrastructure Development uh, Project funded yes. by the World Bank. It's going to do Kibukoto Kisasi and some other roads around town anyway to upgrade them to bitumen standard. Right. And also within KCCA we have a plan starting next financial year to upgrade some of these roads which are currently Maram but have the potential to remove traffic from right. the center of the yes. city. Yes. So there's that plan which we have to implement. Um, I think this this plan will also augment kind of uh, support what um, other programs which are going on to decongest the city because if someone wants to for example if someone is moving from Entebbe Road to Massacre Road yes he doesn't have uh, we shall create some bypasses whereby he does not have to say come to Chibuye Junction but he can pass around uh, and uh, join Massacre Road through Motombe side, those areas, plus many other areas. We are looking at uh, specific roads which can contribute to congestion. Really Decongestion. Yeah. Other city. Yeah. Yes, and yes. regarding the buses, I think it's a good uh, plan to introduce high capacity vehicles coming into the center of the city such that they can pick passengers from where the small taxis let them off and come to the city. Yes. Because one bus, which is, uh, say, 70-seater, means replacing five matatus from right. the road. Mm. So already you have um, uh, a big uh, difference there in terms of congestion. Right. But um, if they are to operate on a drop and pick uh, kind of uh, arrangement, then um, I think it has to be refined very well such that the investors make some money out of this operation because in most cities where you go, yes, we are subsidized actually by the Buses. government right. because you, most times you don't have to drive a full bus. You have to move. On you time. just to, just to move on schedule. So I think that area needs to be looked into to refine it by the government. Otherwise, they will degrade their service level of service and start. You know, instead of a frequency of five buses every hour. Oh, you have one or two. You have one or two. Mm -hmm. So that they cut cost, and then it becomes a problem to the passenger. Because the traffic load is is different. In the morning it's heavy. Yes. Mm -hmm. During the day it's weak. Yeah. Then in the evening it builds up again. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So in the peak hour, they need to put on more buses. And then during the day. During the they day they can spread them out in a certain. Spread them out a little bit, but whenever there's a 
whenever there is a gap in the transportation system, then you have problems. Mm. Then the border borders come in, you know. <laughs> border borders are actually utilizing that gap in the transportation system. Right. We have too much congestion. Yes. People need to reach where they are going. You know the value of time. Yes. Mm. So border borders are known for their versatility. Versatility. Yes. They are dangerous. It is known. Yes. There is security problem, accidents, but people still use But them. they deliver. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> you deliver your promises. So I will be there and yeah. they deliver mm -hmm. you. Listen, this is Spectrum. We're going to hear from you. Our number is 0414 When you're calling, please tell us your name and where you are calling from. Spectrum, hello? Good evening. Good evening. Your name? My name is Owe. Mr. Owe? Yeah, first of all, I want to greet the uh, the KCCA official and the, the Honorable Member of Parliament. Uh, I want to agree with the, most of the uh, what the KCCA official is saying. You know, if you commit a crime, it doesn't matter whether you... Uh, the ignorance of the law is not what. So, those who have a uh, structure in a wrong way, I think that we uh, uh, should actually we should support them to reorganize Kampala. I was a disappointed this afternoon when uh, the the head mayor is addressing because he's trying to undo what his officials are doing. Actually, if that is contrary to management aesthetics, I know there are certain areas where they may not agree, but it's wrong for him. Now, even have uh, an issue at uh, in court, where you can even undermine direct the executive director and his her team. I think it would be good enough for them to harmonize the, the way they work. Because disagreeing on, uh, on the law, it's okay, but he, it's bad for him now to go out and again address a co uh, press conference come to what the, his officials are doing. All right. Spectrum, hello. Hello, Edmond. Yes, sir. Uh, your name? Good evening. My name is Wamboga. Yes, Mr. Wamboga. Edmond, when I agree that these guys are trying to implement the law to the dot, I want to ask who has not seen in this country? Hello? Hello? Uh oh, we lost Good Peter Wamboga Majira. Please do call back in. We seem to have lost your line, God Robert. I think you are developing a point. Good evening, oh. sir. Good evening, your name? I'm AM as usual. Yes. First and foremost, I want to salute the, the guest, such as Mr. George Agava. You know, you have been attacked on many occasions, but we want to assure you that you are on the right path. And we need Kampala to move ahead as we see other cities. We should embrace what Kampala KCC is doing. And on the issue of the road mayor, a road mayor is trying to the king the, 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 the development of the city. Because if you see, Kampala is no longer a local city. It's, it has the, the characteristic of a, a, a cosmopolitan touch. So, Mr. Gaba, that's what we want. Leave the, you know, nowadays we use the word Wolokoso. We, here in, in, oh. in town here, we have a lot of people of Wolokoso. Okay. So you should ignore them and you go with your plan. Trust me, madam. Thank you. Spectrum, hello. 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 Please switch off your radio and then talk. Hello. About, hello, your name? Yes, my name is Martin. Yes, Martin. Hello? Martin, we hear you loud and clear. Yes, my comment, uh, I appreciate all the team members that are in uh, the studio. My comment is about, uh, we need to understand why people build structures without plan. I, for one, I made an application for a plan in 2009. But to date, I have never gotten my plan from Kampala State Council. It went through the several procedures. I have, I have moved. I even got an, I went to an extent of going to KCCA and finding out the extent of the plan. I'm told that the plan is waiting for the approval. And I think this could be one of the reasons as to why we are seeing very many mushrooming buildings uh, without 
the approved plans. My suggestion is, before we start demolishing buildings, let us find out why do we have structures that are mushrooming without plans. Maybe it would help us uh, going forward. Thank you very much. Spectrum. Hello. Hello. Your name? Makoro Kazuma. Yes. I would like first of all to thank you, the moderator. <coughs> Secondly, I have one question and a comment. Uh, I thought Mr. Gaba has come there to apologize for the people who has demolished the, their building and houses, which I think it's not in law. He's out of the law, but because he's using force from above. Whenever we see him in the field, he has a, a lot of people with guns escorting him, which means he's doing things out of law. Secondly, Mr. Gaba, I wonder, you got 45 billion of, of, of working on roads in Kampala district. You've not worked on any road, but you went in the parliament asking for supplementary budget of 13 billion. Where, where, where did you put the money of 40, for, 45 billion? Lastly, I would like to tell you, Mr. Gaba, you are using first today, which you are using in Zimbabwe, in Chiboko squad meeting voters of supporters of such Kubo. Yeah, but this is Kampala, I'm telling you. All right. Makoro Kazma. Hello? Hello? Hello, your name? Okay. Your name, my friend? Hello? Hello? Yes, good evening. Good evening. Yes, thank you for letting me in. Um, my contribution is that uh, I hope that KCC at the back of their mind not understand that this is a poor country where it's sometimes uh, too, um, too expectant for um, standards to be high. If you look at the government itself, its own facilities are just not worth uh, for safety. And also if you look at some of the government schools, they are not even fit for if I look at the road infrastructure. So in a sense, raising standards so high is very costly. But let me just jump also to the traffic and the buses. I think it has to come uh, a little more clear to the people that the introduction of the buses may not necessarily make it cheaper in terms of public transport because if you look at the cash flows of the minibuses, compare them to the cash flows of the buses, it's much cheaper to run these smaller taxis than the buses. Currently, uh, the cost uh, of these smaller taxis is running at 100 shillings per kilometer per person, which means that on a 10 kilometer journey you do 1,000 shillings, but for that cost you cannot sustainably run a bus. And especially if they say that the buses are 50% of the cost, then I think there's an error in that. So the buses will come out cheaper, rather more expensive than the taxis, but at the same time they will not reduce the jam as we're expecting. No, uh, okay. Just a little more technical here. Okay. If you look at the bus, it has 30 square meters in its, uh, in its dimension. But yes. it's 60 people, that's two people per, per square meter. But a minibus is six square meters and it fits 14 people. So it means in terms of space, it has more space in a shorter, in a smaller place than a big bus. So when you put all this together, you find that these buses may not necessarily reduce the traffic jam. In fact, they'll make it even worse. Okay. All right, let's get the responses from our dear guest, Mr. Gaba. Um, it's not you, Mr. Edmond. I think most of the the callers are really agreeing with us, Mr. Were, Mr. Wamboga, Emma. Everyone really uh, sees that we must move forward as a country and as a city. This business of politicking is not going to work. Uh, particularly, Mr. Kav Makolo Kavuma, that I should apologize. <laughs> For what? breaking the buildings. Yeah, not him. Why should I apologize? The law is very clear. I want him to go and read Section 33 of the Physical Planning Act. And let him read Section 20 of the Public Health Act. And then tell me why George Fred ap apologize. I think I'm told there's a group uh, that has been put together in town to detract us. But I can tell you, Mr. Kavuma, that you us, we are ready to work with you and we're ready to, to take this city forward. Um, I think there's Martin. Martin has had a valid point that... Uh, Probably why illegal structures are coming up is plans are taking forever. These two, when I came in, when cases came in, used to take a year plus for someone to start, to get permission to start. Right now, it takes three days, that's 72 hours, for you to get your commencement letter. 
Um, we Three days you get your plans approved. You get your commencement letter. At least it allows you to start construction. If you ac to access a loan, you access a loan. Really to start the project. Then the, the, the final approval, the stamping of the plan will come later. But that's just a formality. Uh, but the technical issues, the commencement letter is out of the door. Uh, but what I have to tell the public is that please use our office. Use the physical planning directorate. It is the reason why we are there. We published a list of over 700 plans to people to come and pick them. Probably Martin is Which one of them. Which have approved. Yes, but I've not seen any. Maybe they used the old waiting time. Of I think year. so. I think so. After so I, Christmas, after Easter next year. We'll yes. <laughs> so I call upon people like uh, Mr. Martin, please come to my office and pick your plans. We don't even have space to keep these plans. They might have a pleasant surprise. Yes. Yes. Your response to some of these questions. No um, one has seen. No, one no I, I think as uh, Mr. Gawa said, uh, most of the callers really su support their effort uh, in, an, in, in, the, in, the, in the attempt to try to, to improve this city. Um, Martin's comment, I, I think uh, Mr. Gawa has addressed it very, very well. But there was this comment from uh, from, from, from Kavuma uh, regarding the supplementary. Um, yes. I think the, the explanation that was given by KCCA was that they carried on existing contracts. You will correct me if I'm wrong. Yes, That's sir. what I read in the papers. Yes. That they carried on existing contracts from KCC, which needed to be fulfilled. And hence, part of that money, which we approved uh, as, as parliament, went towards trying to clear that uh, that 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 uh, that, uh, that outstanding bill. So that is the reason why they're coming now back with, uh, with, with the supplementary. I will look at their application and certainly will support them. You know, when it comes to this city here, one of those who is very passionate because I've had the opportunity to live in, in many countries. You've seen other, what happens elsewhere. I've, I've seen, but when you come home here it's just like, you know, what, you get what, what went wrong. So I'm, I'm ready to support them in any way uh, when they want additional money. Whatever it is, we'll definitely give them the political support to, to push them forward. Yeah. Mm. Engineer Chitak, are you responsive to this yes, question? Um, if I may respond to the issue of uh, usage of this money for the roads um, we inherited a number of contracts from Ministry of Works and Transport after not KCC mm. and um, these contracts have eaten up a large chunk of what we are, of the money we have planned to to use on other roads in the city so we now have to complete these contracts we inherited from Ministry of Works and we have a gap what we had planned to do in the city, we cannot do because of this, uh, these contracts. That is why we have asked for a supplementary budget from Parliament. I hope it will be approved. 13 billion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not too much. So when we get that, we shall be able to do more roads. Because the roads in the city are actually short. Short roads. Right. They are not long roads like these rural roads. Not many kilometers. Mm -hmm. Kampala, not many. So with that money, you can be able to cover a large, a large area. Currently, we are going to do some, uh, with the little that we have, we are going to do Nachivobo Place, that road passing along uh, Nachivobo Channel there. Nativo Muse, those roads are in very bad state, very bad state currently. And uh, Channel Street, that one was impossible. We actually have to, had to move in with that in house team to do something there to ease the traffic flow. We are also doing pothole patching and uh, funding from the road fund to do some temporary relief to the travelers in Kampala. But obviously, these roads will need. Reconstruction. Reconstruction. Yeah. yeah. Break it now completely and start fresh. Yeah. Yeah, um, very before briefly. you close, it, that, yeah. before you close, I wanted to just, uh, uh, I know KCCA uh, yeah. has, has just uh, uh, been established. They are still trying to, to, to get position in terms of how to work. But I was just want to caution them regarding the quality of, of, of work that is done. The, the, the previous case, KCC was just a disaster. Oh. Let me tell you, I have fellow engineers who say they have not take up any contracts with KCC. The old one. The old one, yes. Regardless so, of the mayor that we yeah, had. So um, my, my, uh, I really urge them to look at the aspect of quality. Value for money. That is what we're looking at. The money that we've budgeted for certainly we shall come and inspect some of the, the works they're doing. So you take note that the parliament is uh, watching the committee. Yeah. Yes, the committee is coming. Right. Right. Maybe before we, before we go, yeah. Mr. Gaba, you're director of fiscal planning, but yes. you also sit on the planning committee of the council, I believe, you have the authority. Yes. What do you want to tell us about noise pollution? I know it's not physical, but it's a, 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 a very serious thing in the neighborhoods, noise at the wrong time of the night. 
Uh, we have uh, received numerous, numerous complaints, especially churches, bars, um, and other noise um, emitters. And we have, we have uh, asked uh, or requested NEMA to meet with us and uh, find a way forward. We are going to close some of the bars and and the churches. We have actually closed some, confiscated uh, a few equipments, and we are going to uh, to enforce the existing laws um, very, very seriously. Um, I think NEMA is also in support. They have written to us. So we have a committee that we are going to put together specifically to address the issue of noise. Um, very, very importantly to note is I just want to to calm people down very quickly. Yeah. Very quickly, the, about today's uh, uh, press uh, conference about the Lord Mayor. Yes. That these are family issues, KCCA issues that we shall sort them out in house. There's no cause for alarm. All uh, right. So I think we will move forward to clean up the city. It's just a few issues that maybe You'll a few disagreements. All right. No court uh, cases. Well, we have to end here. Thank you very much, dear dear guest, Mr. George Gaba, Director of Physical Planning at KCCA. Thank you very much for coming to Spectrum, sir. Honorable Engineer Dr. Gabriel Ajedra Aridru, Chairman of the Physical Infrastructure Committee of Parliament, also Member of Parliament, Farwa Municipality. Thank you for coming to Spectrum, sir. It's to be here. Yes, Engineer Andrew Chitaka, Director Engineering and Technical Services in the KCC. Thank you for coming to Spectrum, sir. Thank you, too. Thank, Thank you for tuning in. I've been your host, Ed Montes. Spectrum will return tomorrow. Up next, though, is a news in English. Do stay tuned.